beside myself that I am that you would choose me even worthy to sing songs to you, let alone be a part of a family that loves me, uh, let alone die on the cross for me while I was so far from you. Lord, it's uh, immeasurable, unfathomable. Again, bless though uh, the baptism that's about to take place, Lord. We know that that is just a public profession of an inward belief, Lord, and thank you for the for the believer that's taken that step because it's it's a big one. Uh, Lord, and I just ask you again to anoint that this week, make everything go off without a hitch, keep the enemy at bay for as we move for your persistence, we're going to get some resistance, Lord, and we just ask you to please anoint everything just right now, rain down healing on everybody, on everything, all the machinery, let everything go off without a hitch, Lord, from travel placement to, to making people do the Bibles. Lord, we love you, we thank you, we ask you all this in Jesus' name, amen. Good morning. Uh, we have baptisms this morning, as James mentioned, and as hopefully you've seen in your bulletin. Uh, we do the baptisms on the second Sunday of every month here at Heartland, and uh, it's just an opportunity for us to uh, bring somebody before you guys, the body of Christ that has accepted Christ as their Savior. And so uh, if you're at this church, hopefully you already know, but baptism is, is not uh, saving anybody. And so this morning we have uh, Brendan Laverne, and uh, I have been privileged actually the last uh, several youth that have been baptized, I've been the one to be able uh, to baptize them. And so Brendan uh, actually got saved at camp this year, so just a few weeks ago. And uh, we've been praying for him for several months. I don't even know how long. And, uh, and at camp this year, uh, the last night of camp, God really got a hold of his heart and, and uh, he accepted Christ as his Savior. And so uh, he's very excited to get baptized. He's nervous, but uh, we're excited for him. I told him that all of you guys are in favor and excited for him. So he shouldn't be nervous. So, Brendan, come on down. <clears throat> so, he doesn't want to say anything, so I told him that's fine. But, uh, Brendan, if you were to die today, do you know where you would spend eternity? Yes. Would you spend it in heaven with Jesus? Yes. All right. So, based on your public profession of faith, I baptize you, my brother, in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. Buried in the likeness of his death. Praise the life of his resurrection. If he does work in him. Well, what a great way to kick off the, the Bible conference for 2022. And uh, praise the Lord. And we I already know this morning in the foyer, We've got more baptisms lined up for next month, so praise God for that. Isn't that good? That's exciting. And so, uh, yeah, praise God. It's good to celebrate what God is doing in people's lives and, and the faith that we have in the Lord Jesus Christ. And, uh, and uh, it's just good to have everybody here this morning. This week, of course, if you're just wandering into HBF, what is going on around here? Well, we're transforming this place into a Bible publishing facility, right? That's what we're all about, and I uh, want to get the word where it needs to go on time. That includes the written word as well as the obviously the, the spoken word. So we're excited about all that God has for us this week. I don't want to take a lot of time. There's You can find information in the bulletin. You can get the little booklet that we have and all the dates. and all, I mean, all the times are listed there, all the activity. There's lunch after church right now, so we can all get to work after lunch and really get busy putting the Word of God together. But before that, <clears throat> we're going to put the Word first in regard to hearing from God this morning. And I'm excited about our guest speakers this week, and this, today is really, uh, you're going to be excited to hear Al Braley. Uh, he is the operations director for Bearing Precious Seed in Milford, Ohio. Bearing Precious Seed is a prolific ministry. Uh, many of you have heard of Bearing Precious Seed. We know of uh, Bearing Precious Seed, and, uh, and they're going to be telling, uh, Al's going to be telling the story uh, this week of uh, all that God has done through that uh, ministry and, and all that he will do uh, not only through their ministry, but us. So this week, we're really praying that God would give us vision, give us faith, and give us, uh, you know, continued resolve to, to get the Word of God where it needs to go on time. And we have some challenges in front of us, and so we're trusting God by faith to, to meet all of those challenges so that we can uh, be stewards of the Word of God as God would have us until He comes for us. So uh, here after this short video, uh, our brother Al's going to come. So when he does come, you can hold your HBF welcome until he comes. So when he comes up after the video, give him a good HBF welcome. Amen? Amen. Bearing Precious Seed began with a vision, 
a vision to reach the world. In our world today, there are billions of people that need to hear the truth of God's Word. They need to know that somebody loves them very much. And since the beginning of time, has desired to have a restored, restored relationship, relationship with them, that someone gave his life as a sacrifice for the sake of all mankind. He died, was buried, and rose again in victory. And yet, still today, there's a world out there with no knowledge of Jesus Christ. The harvest truly is plenteous, but the laborers are few. Bearing Precious Seed is committed to getting the scripture in their hands and in their language, to printing and distributing God's word free of charge to people all over the world. Let's take a look at what it takes to print a copy of God's word. Printing a single copy of scripture is a process. Hello, my name is Al Brayling. I'm standing in the BPS print shop. We're about to see what it takes to produce scripture. Behind me, you'll see the clamp truck moving our most valuable resource, paper, at the web press. These rolls of paper run through a Gauss press six rolls at a time, producing 192 pages at a time. The aluminum plates transfer the ink to the paper. Plates are produced before being put on the press at our computer to plate machine at the pre-press area. When the scripture comes off the end of the press, folded, they are bundled together, strapped, and then moved to the binder. This equipment collates the signatures, trims the edges, glues the cover, and are put in shipping boxes coming off the end of the binder. This process is done by volunteers on most days. If they were not here giving their time, the binding process would be slow at best. When running well, this will bind 1,500 books per hour. We have the ability to produce our own hardback covers in-house on the case maker. All Bibles will be run through the case end process. Hardbacks are glued, covers are attached. They come off the end of the machine. They are boxed and ready to ship. These Bibles are now ready to be loaded into a truck, into a container, and a crate or mailed out by box to a messenger who will distribute them to the lost world. They have been provided for financially, prayed over from the beginning to the end, and now are ready for God's will to be done with His Word. It is, it is His, his Word and it's for His glory. It has been said that a single copy of Scripture has the potential to reach seven people for Christ in a majority world country. That's why we strive to deliver God's Word around the world. Here's how you can partner with us in this global impact. You can pray for Bearing Precious Seed. We need God's strength for this great work. You can provide a roll of paper. One roll of paper becomes about 10,000 John and Roman Scripture portions. You can sponsor one minute of runtime on the printing press. You can support BPS Monthly. You could even become a messenger yourself. First Bible School of Translation is training men and women how to translate God's Word in the bible languages. And maybe God is asking you to become a laborer who will go into all the world with the gospel. I'm so glad that God has encouraged those who get involved with this promise. He that goeth forth and weepeth, bearing precious seed, shall doubtless come again with rejoicing, bringing his sheaves with him. I'm excited to be here for your kickoff of the annual Bible conference. Uh, what you guys do here is essential. It is, it is exciting to me. I don't, I don't think sometimes we stop and think while we're working on those scripture exactly what's going to happen with them. The folks that you've never come in contact with, you may never see, will have an opportunity to be saved. And that's what this is all about. Uh, many things have happened through the years at Bearing Precious Seed, and we'll share some of that tonight as far as how God has supplied equipment and men and, and paper, and uh, the list just goes on. He just continues to do it all, 
And uh, as I hang out around here today, you're going to find out that I really don't know how to do much at all. And uh, I just get to brag on what God does, and that's a lot of fun. And so I have a lot of fun. And I hope that you guys are excited about what you're doing this week. We're going to be in Isaiah chapter 55 to start in just a minute. Um, you're going to put together some scripture. They're going to end up going to the Ukraine. Uh, I want to share just a little bit of some things that have happened. Uh, just like your groceries, everything has gone up at bearing precious seed and price. Uh, paper has increased tremendously. Bible paper, uh, the thin paper that we use, has gone from about 79 cents about a year and a half ago to a dollar and a quarter a pound. Each truck weighs about 40,000 pounds, so you can do the math and see what that, you know, a truck pulls in with Bible paper, it's about $50,000. Um, the John and Romans paper has also increased from about 56 cents. It's up in the high 60s, low 70s now, but God has allowed us to get paper out of Canada, of all places, for about 56 cents still. And so we're continuing to run about the same price. But the Bible paper did go up. At the end of the year, last year, somebody called me and they said, uh, one of the salesmen, he says, you can get some Bible paper. He said, I got it for you. We'll get it for 60 cents. And I said, we'll take it. He said, well, wait a minute. He says, I need to explain something to you. He said, I'll send you a sample. I said, I'll take it if it's 60 cents. He said, well, it's canary yellow. And my first thought when he said that was a person that's never had a Bible, they really, they don't know it's supposed to be white pages. <laughs> and we'll print what God said on it. I think back in the day it was probably on skins and different things. So I think the yellow paper would be okay. <laughs> So we ordered the yellow paper in, and everything seemed like it would be okay till that stuff hit the floor. And can you imagine those rolls of paper sitting on the floor, stacked up about five high, and it's this color. You walk in, and it was like shocking to see it. And, you know, people would walk through, and they would kind of laugh because it was so yellow. And they would ask me, what are you going to print on that? I said, something. <clears throat> And I talked to a few missionaries, and a few of them said, well, we don't care what color it is. And I thought, I didn't think they would. So I, I was pretty excited about it, but we waited a little bit. And in February, a war broke out. And you know, those folks' flag is blue and yellow. And it's like God just set that paper there waiting to print some New Testaments. And they turned out like this, yellow, blue cover, and it's exciting how God sometimes paves the way. Now, the ones you're putting together this week, it's on white paper. <laughs> um, that yellow paper was shocking enough that they were excited to sell it to us because they thought no one would ever buy it. So they called me and said they had some more yellow paper, but they wanted a dollar and a quarter for it. I said, I'll just take the white at a dollar and a quarter. <laughs> and uh, so <clears throat> we didn't take the next load of yellow paper because there was a little bit of a quality issue on bleed through, but it, they could read it and it went. Uh, there's a church in Dayton ended up taking totes and totes of it over with them. They took five trips over to help some with some other projects also with some orphanages and some, some food and those type of things. And uh, that's a whole nother story we won't get into. But this morning I want, I want to talk to you about the title is A Heart to Publish the Word of God. Now, the video you just saw, uh, it started off with Dr. Charles Keene. He was a pastor in 1973 when they decided they were going to print the Bible at First Baptist Church. There was a man before that, his name was Don Frazier. He, he challenged churches to print. And Dr. Keene made a statement. He said, we're going to print the Bible if we have to write it out longhand. <laughs> what he told the church, you come to my office and there's uh, nine books there. It looks like a set of encyclopedias, but it says Holy Bible on it. And if you pull that off and open it up, the church actually did one copy of the Word of God longhand. And the cool thing about it is you can open it up and... <clears throat> There's folks in there that have gone on to glory. 
There's folks in there that were little kids that are running a press right now. And it continues. In that video, it showed Dr. King, it showed Pastor Duttry, and also showed Pastor Barclay. The torch has been passed and has continued to go forth. That first year, they did 12,000 New Testaments, and that was 12,000 more than they'd ever done. In the first 25 years, 22 plus million copies of Scripture were produced. Next year, we celebrate 50 years. The last 25 years, over 200 million copies have been produced. We're averaging over 10 and a half million so far this year. We're at 9.3 million. Uh, I think we will set a record in production this year. We're excited about that, but it's all about Him. It's all about His Word. It's not about what we're doing. He keeps supplying it, and it is His Word. If you would, turn to Isaiah chapter 55. <clears throat> We're going to begin reading in verse 8. It says, For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, saith the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. For as the rain cometh down, and the snow from heaven, and returneth not thither, <coughs> but watereth the earth, and maketh it bring forth and bud, that it may give seed to the sower, and bread to the eater. So shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth. It shall not return unto me void, but it shall accomplish that which I please, and shall prosper in the thing whereto I sent it. Let's pray. Father in heaven, we thank you for your word. Be with the next few minutes, and may you be glorified. In your name we pray. Amen. You know, <coughs> I believe that we should have a heart for the word of God for many reasons. When I was a kid... And many of you may have been this way. Uh, I got saved when I was nine, but our Sunday school classes had contests at times, and you had to memorize verses. Now, back then, you know why I memorized the verse? Because they were putting a little star on there, and I didn't want to be the one that didn't have stars up there. But you know what it was happening is that word was being hid in my heart. I didn't realize it at the time, but most of the memorization I ever did was when I was a kid. If you ask me to memorize something now, and I'll cheat and look at my phone. <laughs> Psalm 119 verse 11 says, Thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. Psalm 68 11, The Lord gave the word, and great was the company of those that published it. Thank you for being involved in the publishing church. Thank you for what you're doing and getting it out there. You know, we should have a heart for the Word of God because it is His Word. John 1.1, 1, 1, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. It's settled in heaven, 1.19.89, forever, O Lord, thy Word is settled in heaven. That's a pretty good place to settle something, isn't it? You know, me and my brothers would get into it when I was a kid trying to settle something on our own. I had an advantage right now if my brothers were standing beside me. One of them is five foot seven inches tall. My youngest brother is five foot four inches tall. So I usually settled things pretty easy, but you know, once in a while they get real riled up. But uh, anyway, <clears throat> you know, the Word of God is settled in heaven, it's powerful. The discerner of the thoughts. Hebrews chapter 4 and verse 12 says, For the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit, of the joints and marrow, and is discerner in thoughts and intents of the heart. You know, we need to be in the word of God. It's going to keep us straight, it's going to keep our thoughts where they need to be, it's going to keep us focused on Him, and we will have more of a heart for the word of God. I believe you have a heart for the Word of God. You're here this morning. It's Sunday morning. You're here, and, and you're looking forward to what God's going to do. It hit me this morning that it's 9-11. You know, I didn't think about it till this morning. And 9-11, now if I ask most of you here, where were you that day? I was working at Ford Motor Company. 
And I remember a guy coming by on one of the sweepers and he said, there was a plane crash at the, it crashed into a building in New York City. That just seemed kind of odd. And in a few minutes, another guy said, hey, there's another plane. And it very, got very somber there in the plant. And you know what I didn't understand? I was a supervisor there, and I looked around, and why in the world would there be over 100 TVs in Ford Motor Company? <laughs> they came out from everywhere. These guys had them in their toolboxes. So, I mean, they're always watching TV, evidently. But uh, <laughs> that day was pretty acceptable. But you remember where you were that day, don't you? You remember hearing the news. Brother Randy and I discussed last night where he was. I, that would have been a totally different situation to be in, being out of country. But you know, there was an article written the next day. And it said, if the world is looking for a sign of hope in the turmoil that erupted on September 11th, 2001, may have found it. Teams of emergency personnel who responded to the crash of Flight 93 near Shanksville made an amazing discovery that shocked and inspired them. Resting not far from the smoldering 25-foot deep crater where, where 40 innocent victims perished, firefighters found a Bible that was barely singed. Snow White pages of this Bible were open to 1 Kings chapter 13 to 15, a message of God coming judgment on a divided nation. Division always stems from good and evil. Isn't that amazing? You know, I believe it's God's will. It's not only His Word, it's His will that we continue to produce His Word. So then faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. If you got saved some other way besides the Word of God, you better check it out. <clears throat> God gave us his word for a reason. 2 Peter 3, 9, The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some men count slackness, slackness but is long-suffering to usward, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. You know, it's not our job to decide who gets saved. It's our job to sow the seed. You ever have somebody who's hard to witness to? What do you do about it? you got some choices. You, you can continue to witness. You can avoid it. But there's an attorney waiting on them. The Bible tells me God's not willing that any should perish. I had an uncle. He was my hero growing up. I told my dad, I said, I want to be like him. I don't know what that did for my dad at that time. <laughs> I said, I want to be like him except one thing. I said, I'm not going to drink that beer. <clears throat> I didn't know anything about my uncle when I said that. I was a little kid. He was on Iwo Jima. He was there when the flag went up. He was lost. Came home. Stopped by to see him a couple times and witnessed to him. He said, I read the Bible. So then you know what it says about being saved. He said, I don't think I can be. I don't know what all happened over there. But I know God tells us his word doesn't return void. I stopped by to see him in the hospital. My goal was to go witness to him. Went in and his kids were all there. Thought this is going to be difficult knowing their background. And I'm standing there and this doctor comes in, old female doctor. And she said, Mr. Braley, he's 81 years old at this time. Said, do you smoke? He said, I haven't smoked since all this happened to me. He said, oh, that's great. 
My cousin sitting next to him said, ma'am, that was four days ago. <laughs> and my tough uncle looks over and she says, well, how long have you smoked? He said, oh, I was 14 when I started and I'm 81, so she didn't know what to say. And I talked to him multiple times about being saved. So we talked a little bit, and he didn't get saved that day, but he did get saved a few days later. They, he lived nine more years. Well, when my dad was in the hospital with his heart attack in Florida, I was there. Dad said, I need to call my brother. I give him the phone. He calls his brother. And I'm only hearing one side of this conversation. Dad knew he wasn't in very good shape. He said, now, Albert, he said, if you get there before me, tell him I'll be there shortly. <clears throat> That's my, what I heard. It was about 10 minutes later, my phone rang, and it was my cousin. He said, uh, he said what did your dad say to my dad? I said, what are you talking about? And he goes, I've never seen my dad cry in his life. But he cried, and he said, okay. Praise the Lord. His word doesn't return void. Now, all of us have a relative we need to talk to. You say, well, no, my whole family's saved. Okay. You got a neighbor you need to talk to. You got a distant cousin. You got a stranger. His word will not return void. We need to have a heart to publish the word of God. It's his word. It's his will. This morning, I think that we need to stop and think about it. it's his work. Colossians 3, 1 and 2, it says, Seek these things, those things which are above, where Christ sitteth on the right hand of God. Set your affection on things above. If you're saved, you know what? You're in his work. Now, you may not be full-time in the ministry, but if you're saved, you're in his work. I had a guy tell me one time, I'm just a layman. I said, don't ever say that. Do not ever say that. You're here to serve God. You're not just anything. You're a child of God. And we need to serve him where we are. We need to continue to be a witness. You should have a heart for the word of God because it's his word it's his will, it's his work. And you know what? It's, it's commanded. It's commanded. You'll hear that this week, I'm sure. But Romans 16, 26. But now is made manifest, and by the scriptures of the prophets, according to the commandment of the everlasting God, made known to all nations for the obedience of faith. God commands us to do what we're doing. Not deciding to obey God is deciding to disobey God. Let me say that again for you. Not deciding to obey God is deciding to disobey Him. You know, if you're not saved, you're making a decision. He already did all the work. All you have to do is receive that gift. When I was 18 years old, I was at college in Georgetown, Kentucky. My mom called me one day and said, I'm going to stop and pick you up. We're going to go down and see my, my dad, which is my grandpa, Papa. We got there, and uh, he liked to go to auctions. He had what he called a junk store. <clears throat> he'd go to five auctions a week, and he'd sell this stuff in this junk store. <clears throat> called antiques now, but he called it a junk store. <laughs> I've seen him buy a piece of glass for 50 cents and sell it for $75. But he knew what he was looking at. To me, it was just a piece of glass. So we went down there and spent the evening with him, and we went to an auction and had some pickled bologna and crackers. I mean, all that stuff you do with Papaw, you know. <clears throat> 
went home and he died not too long after that. I have a regret. Never talked about all about the Lord. Now at his funeral, they said he made a profession of faith when he was in his teenage years. And, but you know, I never saw that. I never saw that in his life. Today, we have an obligation to share the Word of God with others. You know, publishing is not just printing. If you look in Mark chapter 5, the demoniac... It, it, it's if you read that story, you'd read it later. But the demoniac was out in the tombs, cutting himself, breaking chains. It become the norm. What do we let become the norm nowadays? You know, when they were afraid of him, he was clothed in his right mind, sitting before Jesus, and the people were afraid. That's messed up. There's some things today that are messed up. We're not going to make a list because they'd get pretty long. <laughs> but the Word of God changed that man. And he wanted to go with Jesus in the boat, didn't he? But Jesus told him to go and tell. You read the next line, it said, He went into Decapolis and he published all, all those things among the people. The other account says when Jesus returned, they were all waiting for him. I wonder why they were waiting for him. Because he went and published. We should have a heart for the word of God to give it to others. It's his word, it's his will, it's his work, and it's his command. How do you think that guy felt that been out in those tombs all that time and Jesus said no you can't go with me you've got to go tell somebody well I'm upset I'm not going I don't get to go with you I'm just not going to do it no he knew what had happened to him he went and shared it didn't he you ever share your testimony with somebody just tell them what Jesus did for you you know, sometimes people say, oh, we're not allowed to do that at work. Oh, you're doing it at work one way or the other. You're living for Jesus or you're not. They're seeing Jesus through you and through your conversation and through your work or not. How are you doing publishing? How's your heart for the Word of God? Now, corporately, I mean, this church does a lot, a lot for the putting the Bibles together and everything else. But personally, how is your heart for the Word of God? To where it needs to be. A few thoughts and we'll be finished. You ever have a hard time remembering things? <clears throat> I remember first grade. You say, how can you remember back that far? I was as tall as my teacher in the first grade. <clears throat> Miss Whitaker. I remember Miss Whitaker drawing pictures on the board and teaching us our vowels. Y'all remember your vowels? Remember who taught them to you? It doesn't matter if you remember it or not, but it's, it's A, E, I, O, and U, just in case you need to know that. Uh, <laughs> but this morning, I, wa I want you to think about those five letters, and I want you to think about Number one, the Word of God has always been. It's always been. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. A, vows. It's always been. E, it's eternal. It never changes. We mentioned that early. Forever, O Lord, thy Word is settled in heaven. It's essential for, for your salvation. It's inclusive. For God so loved the world. We've got A, we've got E, we've got I. Inclusive. It's for everyone. 
you've got a gift that could keep somebody out of hell, why wouldn't you share that with them? Oh, we're all guilty. There's times we don't take the time. We need to have a heart for the Word of God to share it with others. I was in a missions conference many years ago. At the beginning, one of the first missions conferences we ever went to, and there was a little boy there. He came forward on Thursday night. I had been in, you know, sometimes at missions conferences when they have a school or whatever, you have a pretty full schedule. They want you to go back to certain grades and tell kids about what you do, and, and that's all good. But you know what? They sent me to the fifth grade. I didn't like it when I was in it. I go into fifth grade, and I'm explaining to these fifth graders about a roll of paper, how much it costs, how many Bibles it'll produce. And this one kid was sitting there writing the whole time, man. I mean, he was listening. I thought, man, that's kind of neat. He's listening. <laughs> that's probably why I didn't like the fifth grade. I probably didn't listen enough. But he's listening, he's writing, and he came up to me on Thursday night, and he said, you know how much this would buy and how, much truck, how many trucks it would take? And he started telling me. So that was neat. But that night at the invitation, he came forward because the pastor made us all stand up front. Everybody was there, and he would come up and he'd stick a microphone in your mouth, not in your mouth, but up in front of you, and he would say, tell us what a need you have. I don't need food. I don't need clothing. I don't, you know, I, we need paper. That's what I would tell him. We need paper. Well, the missionary standing next to me was a missionary to the Philippines. He said, I could use a 90cc motorcycle. I thought, man, I wish I'd have thought of that. No, I didn't. <laughs> and he explained to them that their preacher boys go out to villages and they ride a bicycle and it takes them a long time to make their circuit. But if they had a 90cc motorcycle, they could make it quicker. Thursday night, that boy came forward. And he said, I want to give my motorcycle to the missionary. Now, let me ask you this. When you're in the fifth grade, if you had a motorcycle, <clears throat> would you have given it to a missionary? Probably not. You'd have found a reason not to do that, but he did. On Saturday, that pastor took the whole group to Talladega. You guys know what Talladega is. It's a racetrack. <clears throat> so we went to see this racetrack. On the way, the pastor gets a phone call, and I could tell it was something very serious. He got off the phone. He says, that was... The boy that came forward, his dad had been in an accident and was recovering and doing very well. But he took a turn for the worse and died that morning. So the pastor and the missionary from the Philippines went over to the house. And when they got there, the boy was sitting out on his motorcycle in front of the house. The pastor went in with the family and the missionary walked up to the boy and said, uh, why did you give me your motorcycle? You know what he said? They need it more than I do. Wow. Smarter than a fifth grader? They need it more than I do. I shared that testimony at our church after I got back. And on Thursday nights, our church gives the Thursday night offering away. They decided to send it to this family. I think that night the offering was about $900. They sent it. About two weeks later, I get a letter, and it's in pencil, and it's got the boy's name up in the corner, and I thought, oh, this is a letter from the fifth grader. I opened it up, and it said, uh, we received the money, and I used $50 to fix up the motorcycle, a few things it needed for the missionary. He said, and I asked mom if we could send $300 for paper. Check for $300 for 
from a fifth grader. Heart for the Word of God. This morning, how's your heart? I think I lost my place. You know, the Word of God is optional. People can accept it or reject it. But we need to give it to them. We need to give them the Word of God so they do have an option. It's universal. It's up to us to get it to the world. It's only good news if it gets to them in time. How's your heart this morning for the Word of God? Let's bow our heads, Pastor. Every head bowed and every eye closed as we continue meditating upon this these, this uh, message that we've just heard. How is our heart for the Word of God? could be right now that somebody here has come and, and you don't know the Lord Jesus as Savior. Maybe you're a member of this church. Maybe you're not. Maybe you've been here a while and when, when our brother asks, you know, what are you trusting to be saved, you don't really know. Maybe you're trusting something or you do know, but it's not Jesus Christ and his finished work on the cross. So if you're here today and you don't know him as Lord and Savior, that's where we want to start. Because really all the activity and all the excitement is of no value if you're not in his family. Is God your Father? Is Jesus Christ your Lord? Have you called upon his name for salvation? So if you're here this morning, I just want to put that out. Are you born again today? You know that you are. If you don't know, you need to settle that. Is there anyone under the sound of my voice that would say, Brian, you are talking to me. I I don't know, or I know that if I die today, I would not spend eternity with God. I am lost. I don't even know exactly what you're talking about. I just know I need to be saved. Is there anybody that says, Brian, that is me, and you're willing to be honest about that right now? Just just raise your hand right where you're at. Nobody's looking around, so I'm not going to try to put you on the spot. I just want to see if there's anybody that say, Brian, that's me. I'm not trying to trick anybody. And I pray to God that uh, if there's anyone under the sound of my voice, maybe you're even watching online, if you don't know Jesus as Lord and Savior, today the Bible says is the day of salvation. Don't put it off. Today is the day. And as we continue in prayer, uh, continue to think about what he just he brought to our attention, the reality that we need to be sharing the gospel with somebody, don't we? Is there a, a relative, is there somebody in your life that you need to be sharing Christ with? Man, I hope not. I hope that we haven't missed the opportunities. But we, I think like, like our brother says, there's times when we have. I know I have. I've shared testimonies of that. We're putting the word together and sending it around the world. What a, what, a, what a reproach it would be if we didn't take time to share the gospel with those that are near to us. So who is it that God has put on your heart? As uh, he was preaching, was there anybody that God put on your heart? that you need to publish the word personally, take the word of God to them. Anybody just say, Brian, yeah, there is. Well, just lift your hand in the air right now if God puts some on your heart. Amen. Several hands. Well, let's pray for Let's pray for that. Let's pray for the opportunities, the open doors to get the gospel where it needs to go on time. Certainly there needs to be sensitivity. Certainly we need to have uh, wisdom, but at the end of the day, we still got to go and we got to publish the word. How about sharing that testimony? Man, what an opportunity to to take and share our testimonies. What kind of testimony are we leaving at work, right, at school? Do people know we're Christian even if our, we don't open our mouth? Does our life preach? By God's grace, it should. And if not, why not? And what does God call us to change even today? We can make that decision right now. Let's stand together in an attitude of prayer. As we continue in prayer, maybe today is a day you need to, to take take on one of those challenges. Maybe you need to lay something down and, and just lay it aside. And uh, as, we, as we meditate on these things, as we give ourselves wholly to what we've heard, uh, maybe God's moving someone today to say, Brian, I need to get saved. Just step out from where you are. We'll meet you with the word of God and we'll help you get saved. Uh, we will show you. We can't save you, but we can show you in the Bible what it means to be born again. You, don't, you didn't have to raise your hand, but if you want to step out, man, we can take the Bible and we can show you 
what it is to be born again. One more time across. If you're here and you're like, Brian, I really do need to know what that Bible says about salvation. I want to know. Just raise your hand where you are right now. Anybody? I, wanna, I don't want to let this go. How about you, beloved? Anybody that says, hey, I just need to lay something down. I need to get my heart right. I need to get, you know what? We have signs all over this building that say, clean your hands, wash your hands, wash your hands. Dirty hands uh, are not good for making Bibles, right? Clean hands make clean Bibles. Wash your hands. Maybe this morning we need to wash our hearts. Wash out all the filth, all the grime, all the things that, that we're holding on to. If you need to deal with anything, hey, now's a good time just to step out. Bob and Carrie are up here. They'll pray with you. Are we ready for this? This is God's work. We're assembling God's word together. It's important that our hearts are right. When we're putting the Bibles together, we need to make sure we're, we're praying over the people that they're going to. But also, we need to be where we need. We need to be in the right heart attitude, not thinking about what the Chiefs are doing or the NFL. Uh, that'll all take care of itself. But every signature that we're putting our hands on, it's going to somebody. And it's going it, it to mean the difference between life and death. Someone who's not going to be edified versus someone who's going to be edified. I mean, this is, this is God's business, and the devil doesn't want to see it happen. And so we need to be in the right place, in the right frame of mind. And most importantly, our hearts need to be right, and they need to be clean, and they need to be washed in the water of God's word. So I pray that we are holy as, as he is holy, right? That we are set apart, that we're sanctified to do this work that God has called us to do this week. And if there's anything in our life that would hinder that work, uh, God forbid that you just push it down or, or, or don't deal with it. Today is the day to deal with that. So one more time across, or anybody say, Brian, I just need, I do need to just deal with something, and I need to get it right. Get it right now. Anybody say, pray for me. I'll pray for you. Amen. Anybody else? Let's get our hearts right. Let's be right with God so we can accomplish his mission and his power for his glory. If you got bitterness or hatred, strife, sin, let go of it so that God can use you the way he wants to use you to accomplish his mission, his power. This week, right, we talk, I always talk about going around the world. I talk about going to your neighbor. Right now, I'm telling you right now, we got to go to church. <laughs> we got to be here. We got to be present in what's happening right now. With the, and we got to be able to, with a clean conscience, put our hands on the word of God, knowing that we're right with God, we're right with one another, and that, and that power is going to infuse the distribu distribution of the word of God. And, beloved, if we do that with the right heart attitude, it's going to happen not just here in this building. It's going to happen when you go back to school, when you go back to work, when you go back to wherever you're going. God's going to bless this time. I was out here talking with one of the workers yesterday. He's telling me, Brian, I don't know why, but when I put my hands on the Scripture, when I assemble the Bible, all my other cares go away. I know why, because it's God's Word. God wants us to prioritize His Word in our lives, in our hearts, in our walk, and in, obviously, the assembly and publishing of the Word of God. So I pray that our hearts are right this week. We're going to be sacrificing our time. We're going to be sacrificing our talent. And by God's grace, sacrifice and treasure to advance the mission. What a great testimony we've heard. I pray that our hearts will be prepared to give. Be prepared for this coming uh, Wednesday. We're going to take up an offering. Be asking God, God, what would you have me give? Would I be like that fifth grader? Would I give back to the Lord uh, what you've asked me to give? Be thinking about that. Be praying about that so that we're ready to give toward this great work of publishing God's Word. Heavenly Father, we're thankful for this opportunity just to have a moment to pause and, and receive what has been given to us, as simple as those vowels, A-E-I-O-U. Lord, we're, we're so thankful for the message that we've heard from our brother Al, and we thank you so much for the great ministry, Lord. And we've seen when a church publishes the Word of God the, the way that you, you bless that, Lord, because it's your will. Lord, thank you for counting us as part of that great company. And Lord, help our hearts and our, our hands to be clean before you as we endeavor to get involved in this uh, process of, of assembling the Word of God. Help it not to become some mechanical process, Lord. Help us to understand that there's mechanisms involved, Lord. There is order, there is structure, there is, is labor, there is effort. But at the end of the day, Lord, I pray that our hearts would be right with you so that the word of God would get where it needs to go on time. We pray for everybody in the supply chain, Lord. This is a great work that only you can accomplish. And, Lord, we're so thankful for the privilege to be a part of it. Lord, I pray that we would sanctify our lives today, sanctify our time today, and sanctify our treasure as we give back to you this week. Lord, I pray, God, for those that raised hands and said, Hey, Brian, I, I need some I need some aid here. I, I pray, God, that the Holy Ghost would minister to them, Lord. I pray, God, if there's any sin in our lives, you'd make it very obvious 
we confess it and forsake it, knowing that you have mercy. Lord, I pray, God, that you would give people grace where they need grace, Lord, conviction where they need conviction, power where we need power, love where we need love, comfort where we need comfort. Oh, Heavenly Father, there are hurting people under this congregation. I think of my brother, JB, just lost his father. Lord, we pray for him. Lord, we pray for others that are that have uh, other ailments, Lord, and other difficulties in their life. We pray, God, that you would encourage those that can't physically be part of this project. Lord, we pray, God, that you would help encourage them in prayer. We pray for sisters like Bobby Blaine who would love to be here but can't be. Lord, we pray, God, for all those that, that, that are still part of the body and still praying, Lord. They're just as important as those that are putting hands on the Scripture. So, Father, I pray that we would all come together as one man. Lord, I pray, God, that you would bring all the saints from all over the metro that want to be a part of this and, and even more, Lord, and that, that we could all get into this great work, Lord, and that you would be glorified. We thank you and we praise you for this opportunity, and we ask, Lord, your blessing on this day and this week and all the things that we're going to hear, see, and do. We ask, Lord, that you'd be glorified, and we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. Thank you for coming this morning. Um, <clears throat> we're going to prepare to take up the offering. And uh, as we do that, I'm going to ask Randy, uh, you're going to come and, and give a few announcements and, and uh, give us some information. I'll be praying over the offering as Randy comes. Heavenly Father, we're thankful for the opportunity just to give back to you today. We're thankful for all that's uh, gone on this weekend already with the, the sacrifice and the, uh, the movement of things around the, the property and the building. We pray, God, as we give back to you this morning that you bless it in a mighty way, that, you, that it would go forth for your honor and glory. We thank you for the word of God that we've heard. We pray, God, a blessing on uh, this message in our hearts, Lord. Bring us back tonight, Lord, and just, uh, and Lord, encourage us as we give back to you. Help us to put ourselves in the plate today, Lord. Use us as you would to accomplish your mission. Thank you for this privilege of giving back. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Uh, just a couple of uh, announcements. Most of them are in the bulletin, so you and uh, get those by reading the bulletin. But I do want to mention two things that's in the bulletin that I think is important for your attention. Two of them. One of them, one of them says there's some ministry help needed. Uh, first is at the Resource Center. Uh, Heather Borntrigger is kind of heading that up, and she could use uh, some people to kind of rotate manning the uh, Resource Center, which is that wooden box that's out there. Inside that wooden box are Bibles and study materials 